Now, back to the show. This is The Law Show on CL 650. And welcome back to The Law Show on CL 650. We're talking about family law. We have Leah Donaldson and David Halkett from Macquarie LLP, formerly... Corey Hunter. That's right. In uh, Surrey Central Skytrain Station. Yeah. We're in Central City in the tower, and it's right across from the Surrey Central Skytrain Station. <laughs> I can always get that confused. <laughs> All right. So we're, what is the Family uh, Law Act, and, and has it been the same for a long period of time? No, the Family Law Act came into uh, play into force March 18th, 2013. It's the basic statute in British Columbia of how to divide property uh, guardianship rights, um, parentage, um, all, all, basically it's, it's the governing statute for family law matters for most of them in this province. Was it called something before? It was the Family Relations Act mm -hmm. before. Uh, it changed a lot. Um, we also have the Divorce Act, which is the federal statute, which deals with ending the legal marriage and uh, also custody and, and um, support issues for married couples. So why is one federal and one provincial? That's all historical. Uh, back when Confederation came in, they divided up. Property rights were provincial, but uh, divorce uh, was federal because uh, Protestants in Quebec wanted to be able to get divorced. And under, under the oh, Quebec Roman law, Catholic, they couldn't. Yes, yeah, of course. So they couldn't. So they, uh, it became a federal jurisdiction. Tricky. And so do you have to, like, uh, you have to be able to... It, 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 does one ever have to go to provincial court and the other one go to f uh, federal? No. The, well, divorce matters have to go to Supreme Court if you want right. a divorce. Only a Supreme Court judge can end your marriage. But um, And if you have assets, you have to go there into uh, Supreme Court. But Family Law Act applies in both levels of court, depending on the issues. Okay. So uh, what changed in, in 13? Um, well, common law couples can now divide assets. It used to be they, they had no right to divide it statutorily. It had to be under constructive trust. So uh, what does that, I don't know what yeah, that means. What does that mean? Was, yeah, constructive trust is you had to show you contributed to the property. And, and Leah knows more about this from her estate litigation side. But you had to show you contributed to a property um, that benefited the, your, your spouse and that you suffered a corresponding deprivation. In other words, I don't have an interest in this property, but I gave you money and work towards okay. it. Okay. I'm kind of fogging over here. What's, uh, I, I don't mean yeah. to disrespectful, but like, is, is can you give me an example? Yeah. So if you say you married someone, um, and the wife had the home at the time and it was in her name, but the husband lived there for 20 years and he did an extensive renovation. So even physical labor, maybe it wasn't even, you know, monetary contributions, but he did a ton of work around that house over 20 years. At the end of the day, if they weren't married legally, mm -hmm. they wouldn't automatically have a claim under the Family Relations Act to say, I'm entitled to that property. So you had to hire someone like yourself. To, to make a mm -hmm. constructive trust argument to okay. say, I gave you labor and time and maybe some money and I'm not, I'm being deprived of that um, and that's unfair, essentially. Okay. So now? Now the Family Law Act says that common law spouses, even though they're not married, they have a statutory right to say... I have a claim against that property. Yeah. So it's easier. Yes. Yeah, the statutory claims are always easier because you don't have to show contribution. You just have to show we were together for in a marriage-like relationship for the two years. All right, let's break this down. A personally, ever you know, it's somebody and have moved in with their boyfriend, girlfriend, and they've been together for again. You go, uh, by the way, mm -hmm. just an FYI, uh, you are now sort of technically under the eyes of the law married. Do you ever have that conversation over a glass of wine uh, with your friends? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do have that conversation with friends, just because yeah, people don't often know but what is the, the number. The what's, what's how many? Two years. Two years. Okay. It's not the yeah. same as often people think it's the same as the tax rules, which I believe is six months. Yeah, it's not. It's, it, it's not. It's two years. So you have to live continuously with that person for two years. And time flies. Two years is... It flies. Oh, yeah. 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 And then you're considered to have had that relationship start at the beginning of the time. So it's not... It starts at that two-year mark and then goes forward. It's that you've been... Say you moved in in 2010. Um, you're not technically common law till 2012, but they backdate the time that you've been together to 2010. If a claim ever arises. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So when they brought the, the new act in in 2013, they caught a lot of people who didn't think they were common law that automatically became common law. So what you're saying is, I'll give you a, a, a house example. So you are common law until two years later, but 
they'll, they'll backdate it those two years. So in that two years, your house could have a, a, a appreciated dramatically yep. in value. Yes. Yep. And you say, well, we were just dating then. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so if, if the relationship is, is deemed to be common law mm-hmm. uh, or a marriage-like relationship, is probably a better way to put it as it's defined in the act, back to when a certain day, that's when your interest in the home begins to uh, a crew, so to speak. So this is why I joke and I say, you have that, you know, here's my free advice. You're now uh, technically married um, uh, for all intents and purposes in the eyes of the law. So why is that important for people and, and sh- what should they be doing when they get close to that two-year mark? I would say they should be at least speaking to a lawyer about it. Um, and then if it, if the situation warrants it, probably a cohabitation agreement is a good idea. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, from the negative side, the, the evil side of, of me says, if you're not sure, you're better to move out at that point and then reevaluate where you're at. Because that doesn't you, sound like love, David. Come on. It isn't. That, but unfortunately, people have been trapped in that way. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, um, and if, if they wait the, the more than the, the two years, like if you're not sure at 22 months, you may not be more sure at 26 months. But the difference in the legal ramifications is huge. Okay, so when you have somebody that they've been together for two years, often they just pack their bags and leave and go their separate ways. How many people sort of say, well, no, it's past 24 months. Uh, I I have a claim. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like some people would just say, okay, you go your way. I'll go my way. Mm -hmm. No harm, no foul. But some are there people that after that 24th month, they say, listen, now I'm entitled to they, this. They do. I have had files where we've had to go look at emails and things like that because it does come down <clears throat> to the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, it, it's an unusual circumstance. It doesn't happen all the time. But there are cases where it does come down yeah. to the calculation of those days. And, yeah, and so what I always say, if, if someone's not sure, come in and get your legal advice as to um, when you may have been began living together and what the what your ramifications are because if you're if it's only been together you know 25 26 months sure the property may have gone up a little but there's probably going to be the exclusion of the property that you moved into and your rights to spousal support if any are going to be pretty minimal Mm -hmm. so usually that's one that there's ripe for a a quick relatively quick settlement to resolve so that both parties can go their own way but when there's bigger numbers at play that's when people get yeah it, it, greedier <laughs> well yeah if, you know when there's when there's potentially quote unquote free money which isn't under our statute there's not free money it's it's joint money to some extent but you know people will sometimes fight for stuff especially when there's they throw in the emotional aspect of a breakup that they maybe didn't think was going to happen all right so um what else can we talk about in regards to the family lock that changed uh, in 2013 um well the, certainly they they changed that we don't have custody anymore at the provincial uh, statute level. It's still a term that's used federally but and the, under the Divorce Act, but not provincially. So we just have guardianship now. And so both parties, if they've lived together with the child, they're deemed to be guardians of the child. And then we allocate parental responsibilities between them depending on a number of factors. Uh, but um, we also threw in um, some uh, to, to meet the, the new uh, arrangements that happen a lot with different parentage issues. So, you know, um, because the, since 1979, the technology has changed a lot. So we have, you know, a, a lot of different DNA providers, so to speak, as, as, as they talk about. So we have um, egg donation, sperm donation. Uh, how do we deal with um, surrogates, et cetera? So that's covered more under the act as well. Hmm. So do you have people coming in? Um, it's not so much about divorce, but, you know, people who are going into that situation where they have a surrogate that's a, uh, you know, having a baby for you, like who who drafts those agreements up? Well, there there are certain lawyers that do a lot of those. We we haven't really had very many. I don't think that's come through my office. Um, but uh, certainly there there um, there it's a growing field, uh, and and it determines who the parent is. And I think that simply by having been <clears throat> under the act, of, and Lee, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that simply having been the an egg do- donor donor or a sperm donor does not give you guardianship or parental rights unless there's an agreement that says that you are. Okay, so we talk about the 24 months of uh, cohabitating. Is it the same for same-sex marriages? Absolutely. Yep. So it doesn't matter? No. Nope. Yep. So in the eyes of the law, it doesn't yep. matter? Yeah. Equal. 
Yeah. And um, it's one of those ones. Be careful what you ask for because you might just get it. Yeah, yeah. Because because same sex marriage also means divorce. Yes, and mm-hmm. and there was a, a one point that it was an interesting. There was a flaw in the law that the court said that same sex parties could get married, but they couldn't get divorced under the Divorce Act because you can only divorce a man and a woman. So that had to change. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then there's also issues that under often you can't get a divorce in Canada unless you've lived in the province where you apply for a year. But there's a lot of people who came up, they got married in Canada. Yeah, because we were one of the first jurisdictions exactly. to allow that, right? Yeah. But in many U.S. jurisdictions in the States, they at the time didn't recognize the marriage. So technically they weren't married where they were. So they couldn't get divorced in the U.S. state. So we added in, um, the, there's a, a statute, the name escapes me right at the moment, but uh, it allowed you to come in to B.C. and get a divorce um, if you weren't allowed to be divorced where you were actually mm-hmm. living. So the would they have to move here for a year? No, that, that was that was what the, the, the change was. It allowed to come up and get a divorce because you were married in Canada. We would divorce you up here or grant the divorce uh, because you couldn't get it where you resided. Have you had any se- same-sex divorces? Yep, I've had several. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've had, uh, and uh, I've had the relation, before I'd had them when there was just the constructive trust issues. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I've had same-sex uh, issues that come through our office as well. The, the, any different? Pretty much the same stuff? Same issues arise, same emotional issues. Pretty much the same. Yeah. Yep. There's no difference. I'm oh. doing same-sex marriage agreements and cohabitation agreements as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the same issues that arise. Uh, yeah. Well, and, people are people, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And so um, when when you, uh, it's not a he said, she said, it's a he said, he said, or a vice versa, yeah. or the other way around. So it, do you, it, is there any differences in the way people behave when you got two male energies or two female energies? Have you ever noticed any differences? Um, not, not in mine. It's, as I said, there's still the same potentially power imbalances that you have in, in the opposite sex relations that we've, that we've dealt with. The same issues arise like fighting over where the children should reside if they, if they have children. Um, so the same issues, it, I, I haven't noticed any, any real uh, differences in how to handle the, the matters. Yeah, you're thinking because, you know, yeah. men deal with things differently. And yeah. it's a- I, I, I haven't noticed it in those files, but um, I'm sure it, just like in anyone, there'd be the, the same ga- wide gambit of, of how to deal with them. Well, it's, um, of course, it sounds like, like I said, it's just people. So yeah. we'll just have to deal with all the same issues. When we come back, we're going to get into um, what happens if there are issues in the marriage or around children that you have to deal with. That's next on CL650. There's more of the show still ahead. This is The Law Show on CR 650.